Hello, my name is David Samuel, and I would like to give you now, in a very brief summary, the core principles of how to have a life that is free of conflict, free of anger, uh, free of suffering, uh, a life that is very fulfilling, very filled with joy, filled with happiness and love, um, a totally different experience. The basic principles we have to take in little points. The first point is life is suffering. It always has been. If you think about life throughout the thousands of years, human life is difficult, uh, except for the privileged few, of course, and even they have problems. But for the average person, fighting for survival, having enough money to pay the rent, pay the bills, get the food, stay in good health, uh, it's difficult. We have to accept that reality. Life is suffering. And for many people, there doesn't seem to be much hope or much of a positive outlook for the long-term future of old age sickness and death, ultimately. We do our best to avoid that reality, but subconsciously, we're aware of that. So basically, we subconsciously know life is suffering. And for some more, more so than others, for some it's a daily event, uh, for some it's momentary, um, but you determine your level of how much suffering is in your life. So life is suffering, number one. Number two, we have to have hope. We need a purpose. We need a reason for our existence. We need to know that there's a point. Why am I alive? Why do I live? And what happens next after I die? So we need hope. We need a purpose. We need a, a point, a reason to all of this. And then again, if there is no uh, purpose or point that we can identify clearly, life becomes again more suffering, more pointless, more painful. Third point, pain causes violence. Pain causes anger. Pain causes stress. So our first two points show us that life is filled with pain for many, many people. Whether we're looking at it in the face or it is subconscious or it is just in subtly in the background, um, we can't ignore that most people are living a life filled with pain and pain will beget anger. And anger will beget, for some people, violence. Now, let me ask you a question, which is the best exemplified uh, using women, or for women, I should say. Um, if you are desperate enough, what, to what extent will you go to survive or to do what has to be done? And I say I use women as the example because I would like to ask all the women, will you be a prostitute? Will you have sex for money and with any man just to get the money? Most women would say, no, absolutely not. But I challenge you, I say you all will. Now, given the situation that you're a single mother, you have three kids, they are all sick, they need money, you need money for medicine, medical care, food to feed them, to take care of them, to give them a home, and you have absolutely no other way, given circumstances, than to have sex with random men for money. That's your only way. For whatever reason, that becomes your only option to get the money to provide for the health and well-being of your children. Now, I ask you again, <laughs> would you be a prostitute? And I think that just about every woman would, and every man taking that same situation, if they had to, would as well. So this point shows us that when we are in desperation, in pain, in suffering, we will do things that we would never normally think we would do. Okay. So those are the basic things that rule a human being 
in our life. So now our question is, how do we overcome these things so that we do not have conflicts, anger, pain, and suffering in our life? Okay. So the next point is to say, there's two parts to every argument. Two people. <laughs> you and me. So you and me. You said something, got me angry, and then we end up in a fight. Simplified situation, of course, but that's basically it, isn't it? So now there's two people here. There's the one who's in pain and suffering, who is doing the attacking. And then there is the, the one who's receiving this attack. So depending on which one you are, what we're talking about today is going to resolve it on both sides. The first is, going through the principles we have just outlined, if you examine your life and your uh, reasons for your anger, the, the passion that, that's building inside you that makes you commit a violent crime or perhaps turns you to drugs or alcohol to numb your pain, to get those moments where you don't feel the pain anymore just because I need a break. If you know the situation that's causing this, this pain and suffering, we can work then in another section towards eliminating that, to, to help alleviating that pain, okay? But at least knowing what's really behind your actions is a first step towards change. So that's for the person who's getting angry. So we'll work on that in another time of course, but at least you understand the principles behind your pain and suffering and the reasons you're turning to drugs or alcohol or violence or getting into fights or whatever it may be. Now for the one receiving, now here we need to understand the principle of compassion. Compassion is letting somebody do what they need to do. In other words, if you don't mind the crude example, if somebody has uh, terrible digestive problems and they need to fart, what can you do? You can't say, don't do that, don't do that. It's their body, their body is in pain, their body is, is going through a physical trauma, condition, digestion issues. You can't say, don't fart. You don't have to smell it maybe, but you know, you can move away and uh, so on, but... We can't stop people from doing something that they are out of control. They have no control over. They are in pain. They are in suffering. Compassion is letting someone vent what needs to be vented. And in a way that we don't condemn them for it. And if we don't condemn them for it, when they, and, and we're not talking about physical, we're talking only verbal, when we don't condemn them, when we let them, they can let it out and feel better. Then they can be more peaceful because they feel understood and they feel accepted. And, and what's interesting is that it's sort of like the, the joke of you're talking to yourself and you're saying really stupid things and then you realize you're talking to yourself and saying stupid things <laughs> and you realize, oh my God, that's crazy. And then you start laughing, right? Because you realize how crazy it is that you're talking to yourself or arguing with yourself. So when someone is, is giving you shit verbally and you receive that with compassion, knowing the principles we've outlined earlier, that they're in pain, they're suffering, and you too are in pain and suffering at different times of your life, and you accept them with compassion and let them vent, they will calm down. They will feel that love. They will feel that acceptance. Because what is an ultimate pain and suffering? All the things we worry about, food, clothing, shelter, health, and so on, we worry about that because we feel alone. I'm alone. Who's going to take care of me? But if I have somebody who I feel loves me, accepts me, will take care of me, that eases the pain. That makes me feel more secure and therefore will calm down. So 
how can you, as the receiver, have compassion, have this kind of acceptance and understanding uh, and stay calm in the face of somebody absolutely tearing at you, insulting you, putting you down, being a racist, whatever it may be. And the answer to this is to emulate the most powerful force in nature. The most powerful force in nature in our planet is a cloud, a cloud, the most powerful force. Why? Versatility and adaptability. A cloud can be this beautiful white puffy thing in a blue sky that makes decorations. We all look, oh, look how pretty. Oh, look, looks like a horse, looks like a doggy. Oh, beautiful. And everybody gets to see it. It doesn't say, oh, I'll let these people see it, but not those people. No, it doesn't matter. Now, a cloud can also become so black, so dark, it blots out the sun. So the cloud is more powerful than the sun because the sun is still shining, but the cloud can block it out and turn day to night. So the cloud is more powerful than the sun. The cloud can send lightning and start fires and destruction. It can send floods and wipe out entire villages and cities. As powerful as it is, even that black storm cloud, a plane can fly right through it and it doesn't move. It doesn't get affected, it doesn't change, and nobody gets hurt. A cloud cannot be caught, contained, it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, it cannot be moved. It is completely free because of its consistency, which allows a plane to fly through it. In other words, when something is attacking a cloud, the cloud isn't affected. It just says, go right through, thank you very much. <laughs> and in the same way, when someone is yelling at you and you realize that it's coming from their pain and suffering, it is not about you. It's not personal to you. It may appear to be personal to you. The world could look like it's all conspiring to ruin your life, but it's not really about you. It's just how things are. And when we realize the reason people are so angry, the reason they are giving a shit and so on, or being racist or whatever it is, is because of the pain and suffering in their life, in their past, or what they're dealing with day to day. And it's not about you personally. You can become that cloud and you can let everything just pass right through you without having any effect. Because if you've got your boundaries, and I am me, and you can't talk to me that way, and you can't behave that way to me, and you're not allowed to be angry in front of me. You're becoming a rock, a mountain. What happens when a plane hits a mountain? Everybody dies. So we don't want to have these boundaries because they set up solidity and solidity. Well, imagine two mountains hitting each other. You just turn to rubble. But what happens with the cloud and a mountain? The cloud encompasses the mountain. It makes rain and the rain erodes the mountain eventually, right? What is a, a mudslide or a rock slide? Is a mountain is happily sitting there on its own and the rain comes and it wears away the mountain. So we want to emulate the cloud, not a mountain. We don't want to have all these, these walls of separation. We want to allow the reality that life is very difficult. Sure, there's a lot of pleasure and nice things in life. I'm not saying not. But the reality of the suffering and difficulties of life that is behind all the pain and suffering, which causes anger as an expression of that pain and suffering, the body is a perfect example. You eat food, you have digestive problems, you know what happens. 
It's not pleasant for anybody. But if you're a parent and your child has that sickness and has got diarrhea and whatnot, how do you feel? How do you feel if it's your child who is sick? You feel such a pain for your child's pain. You suffer because your child is suffering. You don't get angry at the child, do you? So, if you believe in a soul, in spiritual being, that we are ultimately all from a spiritual source, whatever religion or belief you want to have, then are we not all parents and children and brothers and sisters to everyone in the essence of our being? Then why should I feel bad and, and prohibit another adult from another country, from another skin color, from any reason whatsoever, not to yell at me if they're in pain and suffering and that eases their pain for some way? So that's the idea, is we want to be like a cloud by understanding the truth behind everybody's anger. We want to understand our own true source of anger, our feeling of limitation, of helplessness in this world. And that it doesn't have to be that way, that we can change our life if we stop avoiding reality. And so in this way, I mean, this is the core principles. Of course, we will talk more about how to make those changes. And it, and it is very feasible. I've worked with thousands of people all over the world and totally transformed people's lives. They, they, they have transformed their lives. I lovely Chinese saying, the teacher opens the door, but the student has to walk through. That's all I can do is, is, is show you these principles. Because I grew up in a life of <laughs> not very privileged, very difficult. I've had to really pretty much fend for myself since I'm 12. And, um, yeah, so I've, I've gone through very great difficulties and I've come through and I'm showing people how to do it and the people that learn can follow and, and understand. So that's what we're trying to do is give you these principles that are well proven um, for any race, any country. But to eliminate the, we don't eliminate the pain and suffering. We eliminate the negative reactions. How's that? And then we can reduce together. We can reduce the pain and suffering. We can find ways to make life a lot more bearable, a lot less feeling like a victim. Actually, you're not a victim. You're, you're, you're a victim of circumstance, you could say. But nobody's really a victim. We are all in the same prison. And, and this prison is our human self, our human body. And the prison of the body is that the body demands, in order for it to survive, food, clothing, and shelter, and most importantly, love and companionship. We need these things. And because we have no choice, but to need them for our survival. This is what I call the prison. We are limited by the basic needs of survival. But we can find ways to satisfy those needs and not be so helpless, not be a victim. We do have that power, given the right efforts and guidance and methods and tools and such. So there's the basic principles. I hope you take that uh, as a start to observe yourself, your own feelings, your own pain and suffering, other people's pain and suffering. You start to emulate the cloud, let them all fly through. They can't hurt you if you're a cloud. They only can hurt you if you're a mountain. If you're really rigid with your opinions and your demands, then they can hurt you. But if you let everything just pass through because you understand that that plane is on a journey, and that journey just happens to pass through you, the particular cloud that you are at the moment, and that that plane has to go through the cloud, and then it'll just keep going, and you will remain there, safe, 
solid as you wish, if you let them fly through without reacting, life has a totally different experience. All right, well, I hope this is helpful to you and I wish you all the best and feel free to uh, contact me to pursue how to achieve these uh, very simple and wonderful um, way of living.